So the other part of section 9.3 in the agriculture chapter that we want to focus on is more or less the business of agriculture. So most, as we said with 9.3, it focuses on the very different types of agriculture that are practiced around the world and around the United States, their pros and cons, um, you know, sustainability issues, things of that nature. So now we want to focus on one particular thing when they talked about um, commercial farming, and that is the actual business of agriculture. So previously we'd mentioned that only about 2% of the U.S. labor force are actually farmers. So in terms of growing crops, raising animals, um, you know, for meat and milk, things of that nature, that's only 2% of the U.S. population. That's a very, very tiny percent uh, in terms of the actual number of people in the United States that actually perform that type of work. Now, historically, you know, we've gone from like 98%, you know, back in the, you know, when we were still British colonies and the front foundation of the country, um, that's, that number has slowly kind of dwindled and dwindled, dwindled, and just kind of, now it kind of hovers around 2%, still again, slowly, slowly decreasing. However, on a much grander scale, when it comes to the business of agriculture, 20% of the U.S. labor force is in some sort of what we call agribusiness. So that's one in every five workers um, that participate in some aspect of the economy that's tied to agriculture. Okay, So the definition of agriculture is this commercial agriculture that is characterized by integration of different steps in food processing. So it can be farming or it can be a lot of other things related to the actual food production and processing shipment and overall actual consumption of the food. So as we've also stated about the United States, most of the farms are owned by individual families here. But as we've also said, as farmers are getting bigger, there are fewer farms overall. Um, and that, you know, the wealthiest corporations are the ones owning and producing the most, you know, actual like, you know, crops and, you know, meat and things of that nature. But, you know, still the vast majority are owned by individual families. Other aspects of farming and the agribusiness, however, are run by large corporations. We really see a number of examples here uh, in a few minutes, especially coming into Minnesota as relevant examples. So types of work in agribusiness include, as we said, you know, raising your animals and crops. So farming, selling um, not animals, I mean, that's obviously part of it, or crops, but selling animal feed or seeds, so selling things to farmers in order for them to plant. Um, so, you know, in many cases, uh, farmers don't actually um, have animal feed, they buy it, or they don't make it on their own, some do. Uh, same thing with seeds and in order things like that. Um, but people who sell fertilizers um, also, we you know, consider that as a part of agriculture, so those that make fertilizer and sell it to farmers. Uh, people using technology, so for farmers to accurately measure their land, where to, pro where to plow, where to, uh, you know, um, do their actual farming. That's very precise scientific stuff that's done today. And again, if we had been able to see uh, the King Corn documentary, um, that would have shown so much of all these other factors that are part of the agribusiness. Um, so, you know, also the use of drones with that also plays a very large role now, too. Um, packaging, storing, distribution, and retail of food. So again, meat packing, um, processing, you know, the actual cutting of the meat. So people think like, you know, butchers, um, people involved in the transportation of the meat, the actual selling of it. So think of places like Lund's, Byerly's, Target, Aldi, um, Walmart, okay, um, you know, all those places. Uh, marketing, uh, marketing food and, you know, selling those advertisements. Okay, that's another part of agribusiness. Um, but also we think about restaurants too are also a very large part of this piece too. Uh, and especially, you know, who do they contract with to get their food? How do they get it? How often? So if you think like Ratatouille, if, you, if you're familiar with that film, you know, where they talk about where they get their food every day. Um, but also, you know, the processing of the food as well. So all those combined make up the different types of agribusiness in the United States and also globally as commercial, right? Because again, subsistence farming doesn't do this because you're just producing it to feed your family. So thus you wouldn't have to worry about all these other things. You would just be producing the food for yourself at your own consumption. You wouldn't be having to worry about any of this stuff. So in terms of the revenue, and mind you, this is 2015, so way pre-pandemic, okay? $2 trillion industry in the United States. And so you can see that the large, a very large part of it, in terms of where's that money coming from, um, you know, where, where do we make most of the revenue or what parts, you know, food production, so the actual, you know, um, processing of said food um, is, you know, about a third of it, okay? While the actual crop and livestock raising and farming is like, you know, I don't know, that'd probably be, what, about a fifth? Okay, another, you know, third is about, you know, the actual food and supplies, wholesaling, so selling the food and supplies. Um, the selling of the equipment, so think tractors, plows, you know, irrigation systems, things of that nature kind of in here. And then agribusinesses, again, I don't know if that's, you know, um, Marketing, taxes, I'm not really sure what agribusiness services are, um, 
But again, you can kind of see that dilution. It's more than just the actual farming that takes place because that's only a very, that's a large part, but it's not the largest part of the agribusiness. So some of the stuff that goes on here inside of the United, inside of Minnesota, um, you know, being Minnesota where we are, um, biggest agricultural processing and food company. So think Land O'Lakes, General Mills. So, you know, if you think again, um, you know, we'll see examples of that too. Um, CHS here um, is a, uh, you know, is a farming cooperative system based here in Invergrove Heights. Um, you got Hormel down there. So you think uh, Hormel, you think Spam, uh, Spam Museum. So, you know, that, that's where that is. A Schwann's Food Company up in Blaine. Actually, yeah, sorry. They have a thing in Blaine, but their big, their headquarters is in, uh, you know, um, Marshall. Okay. So you think about it, like all those frozen foods and things of that nature. Um, Cargill, okay, out in YZ. Um, just, yeah, is the largest, yeah, privately held company. Um, not really sure what they do. We know it's related to farming and food, but it's very, very quiet about it. Um, Mosaic on phosphate and potash fertilizers. Um, so yeah, Land O'Lakes is dairy, General Mills. Okay, you think a bunch of different cereal brands as well. And those are just a few. Um, there's a lot more of them, okay? When you think about all these value-added processing plants, okay? So one example, so you have Bond Guards here. They process the dairy into... Um, processing or dairy processing plant that you know essentially makes cheese okay um bush mills out in atwater ethanol refinery so using that for you know um you know fuel um kemp's minnesota and rochester so again very various things related to milk processing you can kind of see that in a number of different areas as well that's actually a large part of it but you know you can kind of see these other ones as well um that work in a number of different areas too so all that's part of it. So some of the more popular brands that are coming out of this. So obviously Wheaties, um, Cheerios. So again, think you know, um, you know, that's. I think those are both General Mills. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. You can kind of see the General Mills on there. Uh, Malto Meal, which is made out of Northfield, where St. Olaf and Carlton College are. Um, and then yeah, you can kind of see a bunch of the other kind of big products here. Um, so Minnesota agricultural exports. Okay, seeing where we send most of our stuff. 19% um, goes to China, 31% uh, to the rest of the world that's not on this map, okay? Um, and what was it that, you know, that we, um, it's the number one export of Minnesota is agriculture and food, all right? And again, uh, I think prior to the Trump administration uh, and their trade war with China, that hurt Minnesota pork farmers and producers because a lot of that went to China. Um, so again, this is, I believe, before the trade war began in 2016, 2017, uh, in 2018. But again, that's the kind of thing is that was the number one thing that um, the United States or that Minnesota was exporting around the globe. So obviously a very large part of our economy. Okay. Then the actual, you know, value of our top three th of our top things here in Minnesota, um, corn being a really big one, um, soybeans, the biggest. Okay. Because you can use soybeans also for other things. Um, and yeah, you can kind of see the rest of that information too, how many people are employed in it. It's again, a very large part of it. Um, so yeah, you can kind of see all that breakdown within, uh, within, uh, farm operators and non-farm labor. So again, all the members of agribusiness, um, don't think it actually gives a total, I mean, total number, um, as executives and management. And then I, yeah, I, I can't see the whole number. I don't think you get there, but again, it's a lot of people. It makes up a large part of our population. And again, a large part of our stuff. So yeah, those notes are in here. Um, and then you can kind of see our food exports around there. So yeah, otherwise um, we're going to stop here on the idea of agribusiness and how that affects Minnesota.